golf. The most fun you can have talking sports. <laughs> Whitlock and Wiley, Bucky Brooks is back with us. Time to get antisocial. Right yes. now, what you got? Yes, sir. We're going to start with the Raiders, right. who are well off into camp right now, but we've been missing their superstar receiver. I think this picture should explain why AB posted this picture of his feet on oh, IG a few days oh, ago. Oh. All types of blisters going on. I don't know what's going on right there. Mm. When Coach Gruden asked about it, AB being gone, he said, I think we're all disappointed. We want to get the party started. Mm. So, guys, should Raiders fans be worried already? Yes. Uh, mm. And I think John Gruden's legitimately frustrated for this reason. Mm. How do you get to this point without looping us in so we can start doing some preventative measures? Yeah. You're, when you're this important to the franchise, they got to have a holistic approach to your whole body, and they're upset what they do. Yeah, yeah. A little trust is broken here because we know you're a hard worker, so we kind of turn a blind eye to when you work, when you need to pass to do your own thing. But if you come back like this, you blew through some stop signs, brother. Your body will always respond and react, and it whispers before it yells. Those feet are yelling at you, brother. Like, <laughs> calm down, take care of me. Dead skin, everything. So he kind of blew through some stop signs. First thing they always talk about in camp, be a pro. Yeah. Be a professional. He is a professional. He makes his money with his legs, his feet, his hands, all those things. He has to take care of those things. To me, it shows a sign of immaturity mm. that he can't take care of business and make sure he's available for the squad. Mm. Mm. All right, guys. So Jets rookie Quentin Williams was asked about his mad rating and uh, had a little awkward slip up. Take a listen. <laughs> <laughs> My rating, I got an 80 on Ultimate Team, so I'm gonna go play with myself today. So, see how I feel. That came out weird. <laughs> I'm gonna go play with myself today. So, see how I feel. That came out weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm mad. I'm playing myself. I'm mad. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. I just want to ask you guys, what was your reaction? Uh, he will feel good. Uh, <laughs> he's right. He will feel good. One hand with the controller? <laughs> you can still play. Can you still play? Oh, Mike played better. And I coordinated. And I. Man, that was funny. It, it was one of those, like, at it's first I, I, I laughed, and I was like, did he have that loaded? It <laughs> almost like he, it was too smooth, man, yeah. but that was hilarious. Yeah. Hey, look, good, good kid. He's caught himself a couple times in media. Uh, right. stuff. This was pretty funny. Though. Yeah, yeah, he's good. All right, let's move big to ball, Darnell's ball. question of the day. All right, take it away. Ooh. It's Darnell. This is my guy. My guy. My question, question, question of the day. All right, guys, so California recently passed a statewide law that further limits tackling at the youth football practice. A couple of their new laws were no full contact practices during all season, and then full contact is only limited to 30 minutes per week. And it sounds like they're also headed towards a tackling ban for all players under the age of 12. So I want to ask you guys, would this be a good idea? Banning tackle football for everybody under 12 would be an overreaction, in my opinion. Uh, but that's what we do now. We overreact mm. to whatever the media narrative is that's being pushed. I saw something uh, last week over Twitter, uh, a report about how CTE is found in people that have had no history of playing contact sports. I I'm someone that believes the CTE argument is not being told properly. Oh, look, uh... In jest, I'm like, do whatever hell you want to do because my son ain't playing tackle football at that age. I, I just don't think it's a necessary evil anymore. Look, the flip side, the serious side of this conversation is what are you going to do with a kid from like myself who was 8 years old to the age of 12 who got a lot of his identity, his discipline, his work ethic, his structure from playing tackle football. But... A lot of guys are going to be littering the Hall of Fame coming forward. Drew Brees comes to mind, who didn't play youth tackle football, who learned how to play the game at a high level, the highest level. So do you want your 11-year-old concussed? Okay, it's not about CT. Like me, do you want your, your son's knee dislocated, hamstring torn, and you're nine years old talking about I want a Pop Warner championship? I just don't think that's the necessary role. My son's playing flag. Oh, see, now I'm a guy. I played Pop Warner, won a national championship when I was 14 for a Pop Warner squad back in Raleigh. Shout out to the North Raleigh Braves. Mm -hmm. But I believe that you still can play. I think the measures that they're putting in when they're saying 30 minutes of full contact, that basically means full contact where you can take him to the ground. I believe... 
Today's Pop Warner coaches should know how to teach the game without being scrimmaging all the time. Basically, what they want, they want the Pop Warner leagues to mimic what they're doing in the pros. In the pros, you rarely go to a practice and see full contact tackling. You want to see guys at a third tempo. Teach the young kids how to play right. Then you don't have to worry about all the injuries and some of the concerns that you expressed about your son. But we police it better at the pro level, obviously. For sure. Resources. Um, Most coaches are great, but I go to a lot of Pop Warner practices. It's a disgruntled, almost made it coach who's living his, street, living his life living through their kid and going overboard and who's gonna police 30 minutes come on man I, 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 I listen one Bucky's a high school coach and and deals with youth you football all the time but but Marcellus you, you made a point earlier about you as a kid from 8 to 12 you talked about identity blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah I was a hyper aggressive kid I was hyperactive on hyperactive medicine blah 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 if not for football and me having an a proper outlet for me to get rid of some of my aggression. Right. I, I don't know where else I would have got rid of my aggression. Flag football? That doesn't count? You, nah, you just got to lay somebody out? hit yeah. somebody. So somebody's getting laid out, though. Yeah, I need At to nine. hit somebody. Necessary? I, I played with kids older than me. Uh-huh. And again, I needed that. All right. Because I could misdirect that. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I'm not trying to push and say absolutely we need to get rid of it, but it's going to be hard to police the medium if we're going to do no, the middle. It's going to be hard to police it, but I think if we can focus on the good things that come from playing team sports and tackle football, think yeah. about the mentors, oh, yeah. um, the, the things that you learn in terms of hard work, teamwork, um, the conditioning, getting guys to exercise mm-hmm. and get out and run laps and do all that other stuff. So there's so many good things in youth tackle football that I would hate to see kids miss out on just because we're overreacting to some of the stuff that's out there. All right, coming up, Tom Brady.